how is Alec, this organization is trying to help you in this situation? It changed my life, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I'm super thankful for, for this organization, for them to uh, have an eye on me and, and recruit me and come here, even though I was in the middle of a uh, ACL uh, rehabilitation. It's, it's a gamble that, that they took and it's something that I'm going to be thankful for for the rest of my life, for them to take the chance uh, without knowing if I was going to be good or not. And especially now, knowing that I wasn't that good and I had to get surgery again, the way they, they behave uh, with me and the way they supported me is I really have a, a very special place in, in my heart because they they never put a bad face. They they never um, like a, this is a, a business. I I talked to the coaches. I talked to management. I, I understood the process. Uh, when I had to get surgery, I told them if I need to go home, I go home. I, I understand it's it's nobody's fault, and and they almost cursed at me when I said that uh, because they they really wanted me to to stay here and recover and and start playing with the team. So I'm 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 really thankful. Uh, it, it gives me chills uh, talking about that because it's it's really important for me. And obviously I'm I'm very excited and I'm really really anxious now to to play and and give some some help to the team. We're talking about that anxious uh, anxiety, you know. I, I believe that there are a lot of expectations around you. First of all, uh, you have your own expectations to come back uh, on the court faster as we talked about the club, they are also, you know, in the end of the day, they expect you to, to play for what they paid, the fans, the family, everybody who would support you, have mm -hmm. their own expectations to see you on the court again. How to find inner peace, you know, not to hurry up with all these expectations, not to rush yourself to desperately come back on the court. Yeah, I think communication with the coaches and management is, is key and, and communication with myself. Uh, they know that I'm, I'm recovering. It's been a, a long time that I haven't played a, an official game besides those six, seven minutes uh, a, a couple months ago. Uh, so they, they know what I bring to the table. They know that I'm a very defensive mind player and that's what they want me to achieve right away. That I think is something that, that I could do. Um, and they're not really worrying about anything else. Uh, the team uh, needs someone like that, that gives them a, a little extra on the defensive end. And offensively, they're, they're doing really well. Uh, I think that anything that I can bring on that side is, is a plus uh, to the team. Obviously, not speaking Lithuanian uh, really helps me in canceling the noise from, from outside, uh, what people expect from me. Uh, I'm really calm with myself that I came here to get better physically. And this year for me is not a year to come and prove that I can score 20 points a game and, and get 10 rebounds. That's, that's not what I, I came here for. And that's not something that I prepare myself mentally and physically for. I came here to, to be physically 100% and bring that, that energy, that defensive mindset that the, the team and I think the, the whole club um, identifies with. How it's uh, to be so away from your comfort zone, starting you know, from your own country, the, your home and also Basconia where you spent three years. And to be fair, of course, Spain is much closer to Argentina and culture mm. and the lifestyle. How it is like now in the COVID situation, of course, you have your uh, lovely wife and dog uh, together with <laughs> yourself in Colnes. But is it hard to be so away from your, uh, how to say, more common uh, culture and the environment? It's obviously tough, uh, no matter if there is COVID or, or not. Uh, maybe with the traveling restrictions could have been a, a little easier uh, for people to come visit or, or go somewhere else. Um, it hasn't been the, the easiest, but neither the, the hardest. I think the, the people here are, are really warm. It's something that we learn really quick. Uh, obviously having a, a cute dog obviously helps uh, come and get people to talk to you. Um, but we're, we're really surprised. We, we didn't know much about the Lithuanian culture, the food, the people. Um, and they really surprised us. The way everybody is, is really close to you. They, they always try to help you on the street or at the supermarket, whatever it is. Everybody speaks perfectly good English and, and that, that makes us feel really good. Obviously now with all the traveling bands and everything, it, I think it's been harder on, on my wife that hasn't really spoken to anybody or, or met a friend since we got here. Uh, for me, at least I have the team, the guys and everything. Um, but 
I'm a warrior, she's a warrior too, so uh, we're really happy to be here. How that daily, day-to-day -day regime looks uh, out of a warrior perspective? <laughs> no, it's, it's the same like everybody else. I mean, for me, it's that mindset of uh, having that routine to, to get better physically and mentally. I, I do yoga in the morning. I've been going to rehab uh, at the hospital. And I come here and I lift. I watch practice. Uh, I try to play with the ball a little bit uh, as much as I, I can every day uh, and then soaking up the, the city, walking with the dog and not anymore but we like, like going out to, to eat to restaurants and, and see the different parts of, of the city. I want to bring you back uh, to that conversation about your feeling that you might go home. What do you remember the most? Did you have any expectations before coming through the GM's door, you know? It was tough. That was the year that I was coming back from the, the knee injury and I had pulled my hamstring uh, twice and that was the second time that it happened and I remember just leaving the, the, the arena in Basconia and getting in the car uh, like nothing happened and then parking in the middle of the street and just crying for like 30 minutes and called my wife from, from the car and I told her like we're going home. I, I can't do it no more and obviously it was getting home with her and keep crying for for a while and getting to talk to her and she was the reason that i still play basketball sorry no it's okay it's something that i've never really <clears throat> got to talk about yet um too much i always try to put it on the side but she knows and that was one of the worst nights. Do you still have these, you know, conversations with your wife, or you, as you said, you try to pull, pull it away? <clears throat> we talk about it uh, from one night, that night, that certain night. We talk about what happened and how we we got to fight through it. Uh, but obviously now we, we put everything aside uh, with the help of my psychologist. That he did an amazing job with my head. Um, from that night, we just remember she was getting through it. And then, you know, she tried to distract me, make some, some dinner, do something different. Um, but we, we had an honest conversation about what basketball meant for me. If I really wanted to keep going and fighting through, through everything, the injuries and good times, bad times, uh, or if I was done. Even though I was young at the time, I was 20, 26. Uh, it's, it's really young for someone to retire at, at 26. It, it wasn't the end of the world. Basketball is, is not everything. There's a lot more in life that, than basketball. And she told me to sleep on it and, and think about it. If I really wanted to take that decision, talk to a professional and, and come up to a, a solution. And this time in Colnes, when you after the meniscus injury, you, you told that you believe that it will be normal if I will have to go home. What were your expectations before this conversation with Bjargic, uh, people about your future in the club? Uh, I was honest with them. I mean, I didn't expect to get a, a circus second surgery here. And I, I told them I didn't come here to steal their money or their time or anything. Uh, they, they offered me the best help. Uh, since I got here, I've been working out with Sigitas every single day and with Tutti on the court, uh, individually work. And obviously this was a, a major setback for, for me and for the team. They were expecting me to be on the court and helping. And I didn't know if they had different plans. Now with me getting surgery, if they were going to look for somebody else or, or not. And I was honest with them. I told them I I accept any kind of consequences. This is not their fault or, or my fault. And I just brought it up as something uh, in a grateful way, you know. Uh, I, I thank them for everything that they did and I understood the decision because at the end of the day, it's, it's a business, business. And I wasn't here to steal anything from, from anybody. I just wanted to be honest with them and they, they looked at me with a, a funny face. Uh, talk, I had a very long conversation with, with coach and he told me not to worry about it because they, they wanted me back. And obviously that was a, a great relief uh, for me, uh, knowing that the club still wants me and is, is betting for me. It's something that motivates me every single day. 
So you, in some way you were surprised by, by the direction of, of, of the coach, uh, right? I don't know if surprise. I, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I was just coming with them honestly. Did you have your luggage packed before that? <laughs> no, 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 I didn't. Uh, I was just, just in case, you know, I, I didn't know what, what would happen. I, I talked to my agent the, the night before everything happened. And, I, and he told me, we don't know what's going to happen. It's their decision. And I told him I, I understand anything. And you talked with the coach or the, the GM? Also? I, I, no, I talked with coach and he talked with the GM. Um, actually, we live really close with, with Palius and, and I saw him a few days after and he told me, you know, you're crazy, you're recovering here and, and we need you on the court uh, as soon as possible. What do you think, what is the timeline come back and how you're going forward to it? I mean, it's coming up along really well. Um, but with this kind of surgery, obviously having a, a major surgery before with the ACL and now with the meniscus and a little cartilage, I don't think there's a um, exact ex uh, time date uh, for me to come back. Obviously, um, the goal is to be back by, by January, but there could be a, a few bumps on the road if the knee uh, gets some liquid in it from, from working out or, or there is something uh, that we need to stop for a few days that might uh, make the, the way a little longer. So there isn't an, uh, an, an exact date, but by now uh, the work has been uh, really good. The knee has been evolving really well. All the swallowing uh, went away. And now I'm just trying to get back the strength of the, of the leg to start uh, running again. So you're back to the practice regime, watching uh, the practices again? Yeah. And the hope is over there, near the baseline? Yeah, yeah, I, I am now. I'm enjoying it. <laughs>